Hey, this is Mr. Masonette, and what we're going to do in today's tutorial is we're going to practice solving systems of equations by using the elimination method. And to do this, I'm going to use three different examples. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the elimination method is basically taking our two equations and getting rid of or eliminating either the x variable or the y variable. Basically, what we're doing is we're turning the coefficient of those variables into zero. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So our goal really is, say for example, we had 3y. To turn that into 0, we would have to do minus 3y. The coefficient would have to be opposite, so it would result in 0y. And anything times 0 is 0, so then we would have no y value. So that is really our goal with a system of equations. We are trying to eliminate either the x or the y, leaving us with one variable that we can solve. Now, this given example right here is rather easy because this one is already set up for us to solve. What I mean by that is if we take a look at this y here, this is positive 1y, and this right here is negative 1y, which means when we add these two quantities together, that is going to result in 0y, eliminating the y variable. So here's what we do in that case. We are going to add the two equations together by taking this 1x and this 1x and combining them to get 2x. And of course, like we said before, these y terms are going to result in 0. So they are going to cancel each other out. And right here, we have 1 plus 7, which is 8. So now we have the equation 2x equals 8. And we can just see that x is going to be equal to 4. I'm not going to go ahead and show every little step here and divide both sides by 2 because we can just see using mental math that 2 times 4 is equal to 8. So we already know that x for this system of equations is equal to 4. Now, once you get the value of one of the variables, you go ahead and pick one of the two equations. I'm just going to pick the first one, x plus y equals 1 and you substitute x with 4, and then you solve for y. And that will tell you what your y value is. Now we can see that y is going to be a negative number because the only thing you can add to 4 to get something smaller than 4 will be a negative, and that would be negative 3. Now if you wanted to show the work, you would subtract 4 from both sides of your equation. The 4s would cancel out and y would be equal to 1 take away 4, which would put you at 3 below 0. All right, now that we have the x and the y value, let's talk really briefly about what this means. Now, each of these equations are linear equations, so if we were to graph each of these equations, they would form a straight line on the coordinate plane, and there is a single point where these two lines would intersect, and the x and the y value that we came up with would represent that point of intersection. Because if we were to take a look at each individual equation, you could actually get a lot of different values for x and y that would equal positive 1. However, there is only one x and one y that would work for both equations. So it is that single point of intersection that represents our system of equations. For example, you could put 0 in for x and you could put 1 in for y and 0 plus 1 would equal 1. However, 0 and 1 would not work for the second equation. So what we're doing is we are finding that point of intersection because it is that x and that y value that would work for both equations. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. Okay, taking a quick scan at these equations right here, we can see that we do not have any x values or y values that when added would result in 0. Like 2x and 3x is 5x, positive 3y, and negative 2y would be positive 1y. So neither of these terms, when added, would result in 0. So what we have to do is we have to force it so one of those variables would result in a sum of 0. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate the y terms by making them opposite. And to do this, what we're going to do is we are going to multiply this entire equation and this entire equation. So these y terms end up being opposite. 
Now to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two coefficients, three and two, and find the least common multiple of those two numbers. And the least common multiple of three and two is six. So to turn three into six, I would have to multiply that by two. So I'm gonna multiply this two by every term of this equation. And to turn this two into a six, we would have to multiply it by three. So we have to multiply everything in our equation by three. So we're gonna go ahead and do two times two x, which is four x. And then we're gonna do two times three y, which is six y. And then we have to multiply two times eight, which is 16. And for this equation, we do three times three x, which is nine x. We do three times negative two y, which is negative or minus six y. And we do three times negative one, which is negative three. As you can see, we have a situation where we can eliminate the y terms because we have positive six and negative six. Now we must be careful because sometimes you might end up with two positives or two negatives. Remember these signs must be opposite so they result in zero. So when you get a situation like that, then you might have to take one of the numbers you're multiplying here and make that a negative, for example. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add these two equations together. So we have 4x and 9x, which is 13x. These cancel out. And we have 16 take away three, which is 13. And we can see at this point that x must be equal to one because 13 times one equals 13. All right, now that we know our x value, let's take one of our two equations. I'm just gonna take the first one and substitute our x value with one and then solve for y. All right, so we have two here plus three y equals eight. And then we subtract two from both sides, giving us three y equals six. And we can see right now that y is equal to two because three times two is equal to six. So we would say that the two lines that represent each of these equations would intersect at the point one, two, which is in quadrant number one because both values are positive. All right, let's go ahead and do one more example. Okay, now when deciding which variable you want to eliminate, what I like to do is I like to do the variable that have opposite signs, like we have a negative y term here and a positive y term. Now these x terms are both positives, which means to make one of them opposite, I would have to include a negative. So I'm going to eliminate the y terms again. All right, so what we're gonna do to eliminate these y terms is we have to find the least common multiple of our two coefficients, and the LCM of two and four is four. So what we're gonna do is multiply every term in this equation, so this will turn into four. So we are gonna to have to multiply this by two. But that also means we have to multiply every other term by two. So we're gonna take two sets of five x, which is 10x minus 4y is equal to two times 19, which is 38. Now notice that this coefficient is already four, so we can actually leave this equation alone. So we're gonna write 3x plus 4y equals one. So we can see here that we have opposite coefficients so that is going to be completely eliminated. So let's go ahead and add these two equations together. So we're gonna get rid of the y terms, combine the x terms, which would be 13x equals 39. And the only thing we can multiply 13 by to make 39 is three. So x equals three. All right, now what we have to do is choose one of our two equations and substitute x with three so we can solve for y. Let's go ahead and pick the second equation because visually it looks a little bit easier to work with. So we're gonna take three and multiply it by three plus four y equals one. 
All right, so now we have 9 plus 4y equals 1. And we have to subtract 9 from both sides of our equation, which leaves us with 4y equals negative 8. And the only thing we can multiply 4 by to produce negative 8 would be negative 2. So y equals negative 2. So the point at which the lines that represent these two equations intersect at would be positive 3 and negative 2. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out my math video. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.